On the frontier, the chuck wagon was a place for food and conversation on the trail. Cookie just finished breakfast here at the Agile Chuck Wagon Podcast. Grab a cup of coffee and stay for a short talk on an Agile and Lean software delivery topic. Here's your host, Chuck Durfee. Hello, today you're getting a bonus episode of Agile Chuck Wagon. I was asked by Signal Leaf creator Derek Bailey to test out a feature so that uh, he can get Dropbox integration working for his pro customers. And so I'm going to help him out, but I didn't have any podcasts ready, so I'm having to create one on the fly. Today's topic is going to be lean coffees. So what is a lean coffee? Well, on the website, leancoffee.org, it's described as a structured but agendaless meeting. And the idea here is that you have somebody who is facilitating the lean coffee, who's Uh, gathering up various topics of conversation, and those get put into a personal Kanban backlog. If you remember from the personal Kanban episode, that means that there are three columns, to do, doing, and done. In the context of a lean coffee, where we're talking about uh, upcoming topics, the topic being addressed, and topics we've discussed. In the formats that I've used in the past, why we've had a time box of, say, an hour or an hour and a half corresponding to a meeting. So typically, what I'll do with a group is solicit ideas for the first five minutes or so, ask people to write down things they'd like to talk about on their sticky notes, and then we as a team will spend the next five minutes or so prioritizing that list and at least getting the top three nailed down. And then we'll begin. For the topics of conversation, I normally bracket to three minutes. I apologize, I bracket to five minutes. And then I ask for a show of hands. Well, really, thumbs. Thumbs up or thumbs down. And I explain this at the beginning. Thumbs up means I want to continue talking about this for three more minutes. Thumbs down means I'm done with this topic, let's move on. And I'll gauge the feel of the room. If people want to discuss this a little further, I'll go ahead and grant that extra three minutes. Otherwise, I'll cut off conversation and we'll go on to the next topic. This technique has served me pretty well. I've used it as it was originally intended, as just a way to kind of structure a conversation. I've used it to facilitate design meetings before. I've used it to handle grooming sessions before. I've also used it for retrospectives, and in fact, it's one of my favorite ways to handle retrospectives. I'm not alone in that. If you Google and look up Lean Coffee Retrospectives, you'll see some of the ideas that I've talked about here as far as the modified format of Lean Coffee, where you have time boxing of conversations. You do have to be careful with Lean Coffees, though. They really favor people who are willing to express themselves. Uh, who aren't shy. So if you have people on your team who are somewhat retiring and you need to draw them out, lean coffees might not be the best approach. But if you have a team of people who are comfortable with each other and uh, can understand social cues about when they can talk and not talk, lean coffees can be terrific and they can allow you to discuss a large number of topics and actually get some meaningful results in a short amount of time. So in that uh, format that I was talking about, you may be asking, well, what happens if people aren't done discussing the topic after the end of eight minutes? Well, what I normally suggest to them is, if you feel that there's an aspect of that discussion that hasn't been touched yet, either try to prioritize an existing item in the backlog a little higher, so that you'll get to talk about that thing, or write up a new sticky note and get it into the backlog, and we can start moving ahead. Um, In practice, what will end up happening is I'll take a look at the backlog. We have the first three or so items prioritized at the beginning of the meeting, and then after that, I'll start be asking, asking people who wants to talk about things next, and I'll use a simple show of hands to get the next topic and move forward. So that can work out really well. I also wanted to mention that I've had a lot of success with Trello, 
which is an online Kanban board style. Um, well, it's really kind of a to-do list sort of board, but I use it for Kanban all the time. And uh, Trello is great if you don't need very much sophistication. Really easy to set up lists, drag things across uh, so you can get that visual feel. So I've uh, used that technique as well, projecting the Trello board onto uh, a screen and having us look at that to try to decide where our next topics are. Uh, that's a quick rundown of what a lean coffee is. Uh, if, you ha if this doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but it sounds intriguing, I'd really recommend that you go to leancoffee.org and see if there is a lean coffee happening in your area. Uh, feel free to contact me if you're interested in getting a Lean Coffee facilitated in the Denver area. I do know there's a standing one in Boulder, and there's going to be one at the Mile High Agile Conference uh, on April 3rd in the morning if you're interested in attending that. Thanks, and that's it for now. We're packing up the chuck wagon for another day in the field. Thanks for listening. Agile Chuck Wagon is a production of Durf Web. Chuck Durfee is an Agile coach and software developer from Denver, Colorado, USA. Direct questions or comments to Chuck at his email, chuck at agilechuckwagon.com. The background music is called Waiting for the Rain, uploaded by user Sky Coyote to the community audio section of the Internet Archive under a Creative Commons attribution and share-alike license. Hope to see you again soon. Happy trails.